August is here. That means July is over. In case you have been missing my videos, July has been a very interesting month. Interesting, if not completely catastrophic for many. If you aren't aware, we had a huge hurricane here that wiped out power throughout the city for many people. And yours truly happened to be in the middle of a move during all of this. So yeah, I was really, really, really pushing my eccrine glands to their limits, as well as challenging hygiene standards due to lack of running water for a period of time. But we made it, we made it out and there's skincare from this month that we really, really need to talk about. So per usual, on the first of the month, that's what we do here. We talk about the products that I tried out, tested out what they were like. So I wanna talk about a body wash from Differin. Differin's Acne Clearing Body Wash. It's basically a 2% salicylic acid body wash. It's a very, very rich, creamy formula. It also has glycolic acid. So that salicylic acid helps to exfoliate the pore, helping to clear up blackheads and whiteheads. It's also a great ingredient for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's also really helpful if you deal with rough and bumpy skin. So even though you may not have acne and you may not even think of a different branded product as something that you might wanna try out, if you have rough and bumpy skin, salicylic acid in acne skincare products Products, body care products can really be helpful um, and this product is one that you might consider if you know about that. Now it also has glycolic acid in it which is an alpha hydroxy acid that is hydrating and exfoliating. There's shea butter in the formula. They make a big deal of the blue tansy extract. Now blue tansy essential oil allegedly has anti-inflammatory compounds in it but you guys know essential oils they can be a contact allergen for a lot of people. Extra Extract is always this kind of nebulous category of like, what exactly did they extract from the oil? I don't know, or from the plant, who knows? Um, but that is in there and it may have anti-inflammatory properties. But when I tell you guys that this product does not perform in the way in which it is marketed, my experience using it, if you are in the shower and you go to put this in your washcloth, your loofah, or in your hand to lather to your body, good luck. There is absolutely no lather with this whatsoever. I think they need to call it something else because I think a lot of people are going to buy this product, try it out that way, and find it's very unwieldy, difficult to spread on the skin in the shower on like a washcloth or something of that sort. Now, to be fair, in the directions for use, for how to use the product, they don't really mention lathering it to the body, okay? But most people see something marketed as a body wash and they're just going to default I'll do that. The way I found this product works really, really, really well is actually to put it on the skin, almost like you would put on a lotion or a cream before you actually get in the shower. What I end up doing is getting undressed to get in the shower, but before I get in the shower, I put it all over to the areas like on my thighs, my upper arms, my chest, my back. Then I do my oil cleansing step. You know, I rub the cleansing oil all over my face. Um, and then I get in the shower I start washing my hair and then in contrast if you try and use it like a, a traditional body wash lather it, it it doesn't lather and it ends up being very difficult in the shower to spread on your skin without it going all over your shower floor because it's almost like rubbing a cream or a lotion on your skin now that being said this does need to be rinse off the skin it is not intended to be left on the skin you know overnight or anything of the sort because it does have cocomidal propyl betaine a mild surfactant, which you wouldn't want to leave on your skin. I kind of consider it almost like an exfoliating body mask where you get that short contact therapy from the ingredients and then in the shower they are rinsed off and it has left my skin softer, smoother. So I think it's a really great product, especially for people who have drier skin and may want to incorporate this. I'm looking at you, keratosis pilaris people, because it is keratosis pilaris is a dry skin condition. I think using it this way, is really helpful. I've been really consistent using it and 
I find that my skin is a lot softer, smoother with this, and I think it's actually a really good product. Now, speaking of salicylic acid as a body care product, a wash that actually performs like a body wash, if that's what you want, if you don't wanna go through this whole mask thing that I've just outlined for you, a product that is not new to me, I've recommended it in many videos, but I'm actually currently using it as well because I wanted to directly compare the two, you know, side by side, how they perform, because it's been a while since I've used this one is the Neutrogena Stubborn Body Acne Cl Cleanser and Exfoliator. It does lather really easily in your washcloth. It spreads on the skin in the shower, no problem, rinses off the skin really well. It has 1% salicylic acid. It also has gluconolactone, a polyhydroxy acid, which polyhydroxy acids are kind of underrated in the exfoliating game because they're really gentle, they're hydrating, and they're easier to tolerate amongst those with sensitive skin. So this particular formula, I also think, is a great option for people who have sensitive skin, dry skin, dry acne prone skin on the body i think these products in particular are a good option for you not to say if you don't have dry skin these are you know choose something else but i think the formulas are really nice and hydrating moisturizing gentle mild and effective both are free of fragrance which i also love all right moving on to some things that are a little bit more jazzy besides just fragrance free medicated body wash now i tried out these brightening eye patches from dermatology so dermatology is a brand i have a lot of respect for because honestly i have not really ever tried a bad product from them i had the opportunity a few years ago at this point to actually go and tour their facility check that video out if you're interested one thing about me that you may not know if you're new here is i really really enjoy those hydrogel under eye patches and i like them because i find they are actually a really effective way to brighten up the under eye area and reduce morning under eye puffiness, just make you suddenly look awake. And a lot of it boils down to the fact that they are cooling and applying something cool to the, the delicate under eye skin can help reduce puffiness. So I really enjoy using them. I find them effective. And if you follow me over the years, you know, I'm not brand loyal to any one particular one. I, I, I've tried out many, recommended many, the Pyong Kung Yule Black Tea ones I was using last year were a 2023 favorite. So I, when I saw one of my favorite brands, Dermatology, had their own version, I absolutely had to try them out. And they have not disappointed in the least. They are, they are really, really good. Free of fragrance, they have um, niacinamide, which is good for redness, dark spots, inflammation. They also have compound, a compound from licorice root, which is anti-inflammatory, good for dark spots and redness. It ha these have some peptides in them, one of which allegedly is going to be helpful for collagen, and the other is also allegedly helpful for improving under eye puffiness and actually has been examined around the eye area in a clinical study on human volunteers. Of note, these have caffeine. Now caffeine for a subset of people can really um, be a game changer for reducing under eye puffiness. Not everyone responds to it. Um, there's a study that looked at caffeine for under eye puffiness. In comparison to a just a plain cool gel without caffeine, there really wasn't any difference in terms of reduction in under eye puffiness, except for a subset of people seem to do better with caffeine under the eye for reducing that under eye puffiness. So some people may respond better to it in comparison to others. Caffeine is an antioxidant. So there is that, you know, you may be getting some anti-inflammatory properties from, from that. Also a variety of marine extracts, Andrus Crispus, for example, very, very hydrating. These I love. They, they're really good. All right, the next one is a product from the brand Minimalist, which I've heard a lot of good things about. This is the first product from them I tried. I purchased it myself. Um, and it is their tranexamic acid 3% serum. Now, I did a video this month about topical tranexamic acid. Like, does it actually do anything, okay? Um, a lot of people just assume that it's gonna be good for hyperpigmentation because the oral medication tranexamic acid that you take by mouth is very effective for melasma hyperpigmentation condition. 
but putting it on the skin, does it help hyperpigmentation at all? It's not clear that it is effective for hyperpigmentation, but it does have some evidence behind it for improving redness. So this serum in particular, I think it would be really good if you're someone who is doing, dealing with not necessarily post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but rather post-inflammatory erythema, persistent facial redness, maybe from healing acne or um, related to rosacea perhaps, I think this can help. Not only does it actively help reduce the redness, but it also, the, the ingredient tranexamic acid, also can improve uh, the moisture barrier. So ultimately helping reduce dryness, irritation. Now this particular serum is fragrance free. You only need two to three drops to a clean face. You know, after you've rinsed off your cleanser, you can put this on. Um, you can use it one to two times a day as tolerated. 0.3% salicylic acid as well as 3% mandelic acid. Now salicylic acid and the mandelic acid in this may gently exfoliate as well as hydrate and allow for more even penetration of the tranexamic acid into the skin. One note about this that I think will be appealing to many of you is that it does not have any niacinamide. Now niacinamide is a wonderful ingredient and pretty much always makes sense to have in a product. However, a subset of people are sensitive to it, find it irritating and are just like, please no more with the niacinamide. And in the case of looking for products to target redness, hyperpigmentation, because niacinamide is so widespread, again, it makes sense to have it in there. It becomes very challenging to find products without niacinamide. This does not have niacinamide, so it would definitely be a great option to try out if you are looking for a serum to improve complexion, post-acne, dark marks, redness, and you want to especially give tranexamic acid a try. Now, tranexamic acid, like I said, its track record topically is most compelling for redness and the moisture barrier. Not so much hyperpigmentation, though it may it may end up helping the hyperpigmentation as well. If you wanna learn more about topical tranexamic acid, definitely check out my video from this month. I go into a lot more details about mechanistically how it works and how we use it in dermatology topically to treat uh, steroid rosacea and persistent facial redness. So check that out. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we had a hurricane. Well, no sooner did that leave, but the mosquito mosquitoes were biting and, and, and they haven't they haven't left the building. So this month in particular, my skincare has focused of course around sun protection as it always does, but the 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 insect game I've, I've really had to be on top of. So what has been getting me through uh, the how to not get eaten alive season? Because mosquitoes harbor serious, you know, can harbor serious diseases that we don't want to get. Um, so what have I been doing? Well, I have been pretty diligent about deeting myself, about using DEET, which helps a lot. It helps a lot. So I spray that on after I put on my sunscreen if I plan to go outside. Check out my video on insect repellents. I go into all the different types, which ones are effective for what. Just as with sunscreen, when you are approaching your insect repellent game, you don't wanna just rely on insect repellents. You also wanna rein in like protective clothing, um, but I end up getting bit because I like to wear shorts and it is what it is, shorts, skirts, dresses. So my lower legs are exposed and they, they'll, they'll, come and, they'll come and take a bite. Uh, so I've been doing the DEET to my lower legs a lot, but inevitably you open the door to check the mail or whatever and two or three mosquitoes come in. There was, there was a span of three or four days where you could not open the door without like seven mosquitoes coming in, landing on the wall. This little bug zapper, amazing, because it's actually very easy to zap the mosquitoes with this little device. And zapping those little Zika Zika Devils is so zen. I don't know if you guys can see, there is one and watch. <laughs> Here's another one. He didn't make as loud of a crackle. It's really, really relaxing to zap skeeters with this thing. It charges with the USB. You can flip it to mash flush up against the wall. Just don't touch it when it's on or it'll shock you. Or you can do it like this. Um, this works really well. Like once you see a mosquito, it's pretty easy to just go up to the wall and 
and trap them in there and zap them. As opposed to like a fly swatter, those things, I mean, that's just a workout for you and inevitably, I mean, the mosquitoes here are, are way too, way too advanced for a, a fly swatter. Very satisfying. Otherwise, once they come in, well, then you're stuck with them and they're gonna bite you. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I mean, they're gonna find, they're gonna seek you out and find you and they're gonna bite you. So you gotta get rid of them if they come in the house for sure. Bites are not fun to deal with. They itch and again, if you scratch them, then you can introduce bacteria that leads to a secondary skin infection and mosquitoes carry all sorts of horrible diseases. Anyway, y'all, that is a wrap up of the July skincare. August is here. This is, this is round two of our most intense weather months it tends to be the most extreme heat and then the you know hurricanes. So fingers crossed that this month goes by smoothly without any chaos, but I hope July was a wonderful month for all of you. If you are in the area, I hope you are okay and all recovered from the disaster. Uh, but anyways, guys, if you all enjoyed this monthly wrap up, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.